Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Prolific Creator Podcast. My name is Javier, and as usual, as I always say in every episode, we, we have a good one, and, and, and that, that's the case again. We have another good one, because uh, joining uh, us uh, through Skype from the island of Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, uh, we have Jennifer Mora. Hello. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> every time it is you <laughs> uh first of all thank you for for joining us because i know you're you're extremely busy uh, and you know this is your 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 little bit of free time and you're joining us here so i really yeah. appreciate that <laughs> um no so jennifer mora why, why don't you kind of introduce yourself or i'm sure most of the people who listen to this already know you uh but you know for, for those who might not um uh, Would you, uh, could you introduce yourself to them? <laughs> okay, so my full name, because here in Puerto Rico, you use your, your two last names. Yes, yes, yes. My full name is Jennifer Marie Mora Gonzalez. Yes. Um, I was born and raised in New York City, Brooklyn, New York, and I actually moved to Puerto Rico in my mid-30s. I got married. I had a son already. I have another child now, a three-year-old. And I'm a stay-at-home mother, and I also homeschool. So I'm pretty busy. <laughs> and you also do YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah, that was that was something I kind of started for fun. Um, I really admired some of the content that YouTube was starting to put out because I remember. For me, YouTube used to just be about looking for a good video or a song or something like that. Or how to, you know, like a recipe. And I started to see that there was um, much more genuine content getting put out there. And it just sort of inspired me to sort of follow in those in those footsteps. Give my own part, my own take on life. Yeah, it, it's kind of funny. You, YouTube for me is so interesting because there, there's like a little bit of everything. Like, uh, And yeah. it, it, it's funny how you have people that... Just watch YouTube videos, for example, but then you have like two different people that only watch YouTube videos, but what they know is completely different stuff. Like they, they are all really into like the technology, for example. Every, everybody knows the tech YouTubers, but then they, uh, there's the beauty <laughs> gurus. Exactly, and <laughs> yeah. so there's all these little groups. Um, so, so it, it's pretty cool. Personally, me i yeah i was always in into the tech youtubers and now i'm kind of getting sick of them <laughs> because i'm like uh, yeah, it's always the same thing like oh here's a new phone like here's a new phone versus the old phones true. like um, this game, i use it for tech issues like the other day for something so simple i literally didn't know how to remove the um the the sd card from my cell phone yeah and and you're able to find out things like yeah, this now and yeah. that was what youtube was for me initially youtube was just all about how do i make this recipe or how do i you know fix this little tech issue that i go have going on it was a sort of a reference for a how to it was not it was never about watching people's lives or yeah. um you know, uh, all of these like, um, uh, vacation and traveling vlogs. I, I didn't even know that that world existed. Really. <laughs> yeah. It, I, and it, it, it still kind of is that for me. Like a lot of times I'm Googling something and I'm like, why am I even on Google? I should just go to YouTube. because I really just yeah. want a video showing me how to do it. Like, <laughs> all right. So you, you, uh, born and raised in New York. Yes. How, how well, was <laughs> So, so how was that? How, how was uh, living in New York, I guess? Uh, were, were your parents also from New York or were they from the island? And you used to go to the island. They were, they were born in Puerto Rico. My parents were um, born in the towns of Atillo and Arecibo. My mother went to the States when she was very, very young. So my mother was a little bit more Americanized because she grew up since the age of two in Brooklyn, New York. My father went over when he was already a teenager. So he was the one that it took him some time to start speaking English um, as a first language, whereas my mother was speaking it almost all her life. Um, but they both grew up in households that were very strict with the 
um, traditions and the lifestyles as if it was like a living the Puerto Rican way, but in Brooklyn, New York. The, were, so, were, were they those that, that tend to have like a mata de guineo in the house or... <laughs> <laughs> they, like, I've they, seen so many Puerto Ricans that have like like a banana plant in their house, and I'm like, come on, that, that's never gonna work. Maybe it does. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I'm. You know, we grew up with the uh, like. If you were too thin, you drank like the malta with the egg in it and the sugar. Like you know, all of those. You know, if you had a cut, you got Vicks for it. We grew up in that in that way, but living in New York City, so it was. It was a mix of, of culture, but definitely like the most um, dominant one was the 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 Boricua culture. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we only spoke English in the house, which was odd. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, were did you guys used to visit the island like at all? No. Or, no? Okay. So so no. you moving to Puerto Rico? How did that happen? I'll come <laughs> <laughs> well. When I was um, 17 years old and graduated from high school, that was my first visit to Puerto Rico. My first one. It was my graduation present. I, uh, my mother purchased a two-week ticket for me, but my whole family from my father's side was actually going. So it was like, um, it kind of sort of felt like a family reunion thing because it was so many of us. We were about 20 people. Um, we were sleeping on cots on the floor, on, on the sofa, in the kitchen. We had cots set up in the kitchen. We were everywhere. We ate rice and beans and and yame every single day. We had fun for breakfast. There was like nothing fancy. It was there was too many people to feed. So this is what the meal was every day for two weeks unless we ate out when we were you know visit the, the beaches and stuff. And we were happy. We didn't eat and you know we ate mangoes for lunch from the neighbor down the block. And I remember thinking, how how come I didn't get to come here when I was younger? This is so amazing. I was um, I grew up being a poet, and I you know I wrote poetry often. And I remember being so inspired on that two week vacation that I felt like I was burning a fire in paper when I would write. Everything inspired me to write something. Um, it was very touching. It was like chicken soup for the soul. It was one of my best experiences ever. Then I didn't return back into the island until I was about 24, and I went to Old San Juan. So that was a little different for me. That felt less... Less local? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Old San Juan, it, it almost feels like the Disney World of Puerto Rico, you know? It's kind of very... It's gorgeous, and it's beautiful, and you shouldn't miss it if you come to Puerto Rico, but... It was totally different. It wasn't as it wasn't as sentimental as touching. It didn't, you know. My yeah, first trip. It, it's, I don't. I don't want to say it's touristy because for me it's nothing like like a Cancun or anything like that. Uh -huh, exactly. It, but but it, it's not exactly like like living in the real Puerto Rico. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I I had better memories sharing and and alternating who was sleeping on the cot in the kitchen so, when I was yeah. seventeen years old. Then I did staying in a fancy hotel in the middle of Old San Juan, you know. No, was it one so, of those uh, cases where you then start meeting, like when you first went to Puerto Rico, you start meeting a whole bunch of cousins that you never know? <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember a funny story. I had an uncle who would just kind of like show up everywhere. We would just bump into this uncle everywhere, no matter what part of the world we were in. And when we were in Puerto Rico, he actually happened to go like the week after. And he said, vamos comprar pan. And I left for him early in the morning, my pajamas and, and flip-flops, thinking we were going to the panaderia to buy bread. And we were out for like three hours. He's like, I want to introduce you to this one. He used to play baseball with your father. And oh, you have to be Doña, you know, Monza, because she knew your mom. And, and then everyone, you know, they were all blessing me and... And taking pictures, they took me to the, a bar that my father used to go to, and it was it was one of those experiences when I, I realized that I had so much extended family, or probably some of them were an even family, but they say they're like family, you know. Yeah, that, that happens a lot. Yeah, that's your primo, like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but it was it was beautiful nonetheless because it was everyone was just so friendly, so so comforting. 
That is the key word. Everyone here is so comforting. You just feel, I don't know, you feel so welcome and so safe. You feel very taken care of. Like there isn't, you don't have that sense of insecurity. Like what if something goes wrong? You know, who's going to help me? You really feel like you can ask anyone for anything and they'll do what they can for you. And yeah, it's. And, and actually, uh, I was watching your, your video from yesterday where you're, you're talking about, you know, one of the biggest uh, issues in Puerto Rico, which I totally agree with. It's wh whenever whenever you need to do something <laughs> and you go to to like a bank or, or a government office. It, it, it's such a difficult uh, experience because it, it, it's almost like it's almost like nobody cares <laughs> and nobody really cares to help you. But then. You know, they're always like, oh, yeah, uh, you need this, and that's not my job, so <laughs> so okay. go figure and it out. After you spend two hours getting it that you didn't even need it to begin with. It's Correct. very... But, but at the it same time, I find it weird because I'm like, but at the same time, Puerto Ricans are so helpful when, when it comes to other stuff. Like I remember when I, I was in Puerto Rico uh, sitting uh, by, by my cousin's uh, food truck, you know, it was so 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 normal for people to come on and, and just ask for directions and stuff and and, and you would see them giving such detailed directions uh, well they take yeah, you yeah yeah they take you too sometimes uh-huh so so i'm like During yeah Maria, somebody um strangers complete strangers drove us to their home and let us use their phone to call my mother he said just follow me and we actually went into this man's home To use his phone, you know, I mean, this is just, it's, that's just how the culture is. I honestly think it's just those offices. I think it's, it's those, um, you know, anything that has to do with, um, a procedure <laughs> or a form. Yeah. It's just, it is. And who knows? May, may, maybe they get in trouble if they, if they help too much or something. I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> But but yeah, I, for for me it's always weird because I'm like you know on one hand Puerto Ricans are extremely helpful and extremely nice, but then if you just go to a government office and have to deal with them, you would think that Puerto Ricans are horrible people. Uh, so that's why I felt I felt almost hesitant um, sharing that. But I like to be honest. But I yeah. I did feel a little hesitant because I don't want to scare people off because it doesn't speak for for the island on the whole and it's certainly this is just a small percentage of what you may experience because as i mentioned in that video this is just something you have to do once a month or two times a month this is not your everyday in and out lifestyle here but you know when those moments do come they are very um stressful but it's it's just a small price to pay for the the beauty of, yeah. of living yeah uh, and i completely agree like i i tend to say like Puerto Rico, I miss it. I, I was very happy in Puerto Rico. It, it was great. But at the same time, I'm like, but why? Because so many things are so difficult. But at the same time, I'm like, yeah, I understand. So many things were so difficult, but I still loved it. <laughs> um, yeah. so Because you it, have to be settled. You have to have a plan when you come yep. here. You have to... You have to know that you have something stable and and um you know a, a natural flow of money that Correct. you can live off of. If you don't have that, then what will happen is those other stresses and those other challenges will start to take over yep. and then overwhelm you. When you have um that confidence that you're good and, and you have the money that you need to to live here and get your things done it's a little easier to kind of let those other things, you know, you know, brush them off your shoulder. You know, my husband has a full-time stable job. So of course he can, you know, God forbid lose that job at any time, but either way we, we have a home that we own and we have that income, you know, that we can count on, yeah. but I never recommend for people to come here um, without a plan. I know, I know. Um, your friend Hayden has, um, and <laughs> but, I, but he's I, an extremely different case. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like Hay Hayden, it's okay great. sleeping on but the on Hayden, the floor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that's great, and I think um, a few people can do that. You know, if you're single, you don't have children. Um, if you're very uh, minimalist, um, I think yeah. you can you can definitely pull that off if you have something 
like the YouTube world and on, um, you know, those types of like small sources of income that, you know, you're getting monthly, it's a little bit easier. Yeah. But ba- basically, you. Story, I feel like you need a plan. You yeah, have to have a plan. You, you, you basically have to be self reliant because. <laughs> Uh, otherwise, it's not going to be great. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it, it's certainly not easy. Yeah. yeah. So Definitely anyway, you you mentioned you're into homeschooling, and that's something that I wanted to talk about. Um, going going back to to growing up in the Bronx, did that influence like your schooling there? Were you homeschooled, or or did no, your schooling there? I, I was. Uh, I grew up in, in Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> But let me see. I was the opposite. I went to Catholic school all my life, from kindergarten to high school. High school, I was in an all-girls Catholic private school, one of those like prestigious kind of schools um, where I was the minority. <laughs> and um, it was a great experience. And I'm, I'm grateful for my mother because my mom was a single mom. My father passed away when I was seven years old and I have two older brothers and she worked her job six days a week from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. all those six days to make sure that we had the best education because she, of course, knew that she was a single mom and maybe she would experience some more bumps in the road with us. And she just wanted to make sure that we were in a good place. But as a parent now, from from my point of view, I don't exactly agree with the school system always. Um, I think it definitely does less that less less harm. You know, it, it it does more good than harm. But there's there's a lot of um, freedom that children lack, or some kids just need a specialized kind of program, and it's a little difficult to find that nowadays. Especially, there seems to be so many children diagnosed with these learning delays, and and these um, you know, these they're put into these categories. My son um, was born with a genetic disorder. And a rare genetic disorder, extremely rare, called Prader Willi syndrome. And he was also later on in life put on the autism spectrum. Um, he's pretty high functioning, so he can many times act on a level of a three year old, and then many times he can act on a level of a of a fifteen year old, maybe a little bit more mature than what he actually is. Yeah. Um, but it's very hard to to call when those different levels are going to come out, yeah. and it's kind of hard to attack you know, to target that in a classroom environment when a teacher is struggling with seven, eight, 12, 15 other students. And it was great for the time being, but once he hit like the puberty stages, his behavior started to worsen. And I was having a little difficulty with him in um, New York City because we lived there briefly after Hurricane Maria. And I had that moment, you know, that eye-opening moment, the epiphany, the awakening. And I said, no, I'm going back to Puerto Rico. I'm pulling him out of the school. I'm going to sign every paper that I need to sign to pull him out. And I'm going to homeschool him because my son can, my son will, and and he has the potential. And he's missing out on these opportunities because of the school system. And I did. And in just a few months, he already started to learn how to read. He never read before. Um, it's just things like that, that he was missing out on. He was missing out on that one-on-one personalized attention. And I don't blame the teachers. It is so difficult now. They're taking more schools away everywhere. It's just not in Puerto Rico. And they're jamming more students in. And and you have to follow this curriculum and you have to follow these. Uh, it's, it's too much. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, like like I have a couple of friends that are teachers, and and it is definitely frustrating for them because it's like, okay, I would like to teach this, I would like to teach it this way, but I can't. I have to teach it how they tell you to teach it, uh, and and they yeah. care, you know, yeah. they care about the students because you you feel their pain, you know. They they sometimes the teacher I I will never mention names, but a couple of times here in Puerto Rico. I had two teachers from two separate years tell me, I feel for your son because he can learn more. But 
we have to, you know, kind of average out the pace of everyone. And or or one day there might be a student having a, a tantrum, a fit for two hours. And it could be my son one day, it could be another student the next day. And these are like environment interferences. And, you know, it's you feel bad for the teachers because they, they go to college and they get their masters and they go through all this schooling so that they can teach and, and they can, you know, give. Um, that to the student and in a way they're limited as well because they have to kind of follow this this list of of you know this routine yeah this curriculum. And, and like you said there are so many students and everybody learns differently like my, myself I, I i was uh always a c student because not not because i was dumb but because i was bored like uh, i didn't yeah. like you either <laughs> Uh, I dropped out of college. I went to school for special education, believe it or not. Okay. <laughs> How ironic, right? <laughs> ten years later, I wind up having a special, a special yeah, needs yeah. child. You, you were, getting, you were getting ready. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but but thing. yeah, like like I'm a strong believer that that obviously I understand. There, there, you can't make enough schools to teach in different ways. It would cost a great deal of money. But I do strongly uh, believe that the the you know different people learn in totally different ways you know some of them learn more by listening some learn more by doing you know uh, and you know you just can't can't make it for for everybody so so ho homeschooling to me sounds great but how does somebody even start doing that like <laughs> i i would assume that you need some kind of degree or something to to be no. <laughs> I actually wanted to homeschool JJ after my second year of living um, here, and I just assumed um, it was it was immature of me to just assume that I needed all these credentials or uh, some kind of certificate or something. Um, so I never even bothered. I didn't even attempt it. And on YouTube, <laughs> <laughs> I I started Google um, searching. I, I always say Google. I started searching homeschool Puerto Rico and actually somebody came up and she was a, a vlogger in Puerto Rico and she had some segments on homeschooling. And when she explained that there is literally almost nothing that you have to do approved to homeschool in Puerto Rico, my jaw dropped to the floor. I said, this can't be true. There has to be something. It, it can't be real that I can just start homeschooling him. I must need something. Not here in Puerto Rico. There must be some paper that I need. And I have to take it to five different offices and get signatures. And there's no way. And yeah, it, it's very easy here. You don't have to go to like um, a zone school to to prove your monthly work where in some of the states you do have to um those are like the procedures to follow here you just have to have an end of the year um oh gosh the word is slipping me right now it's sort of like a um like a like a summary of of every of all the work that you covered oh my gosh I forgot what it's called. You have to have it written and then you have to do one on on the um like in an electronic one. Okay. So those are those are your your documents, your files that you have to collect for if you are going to enter your child into high school. Some parents here are homeschooling all the way into college because they are finding that it's easier to get them into college with their homeschooling um, throughout the years than it is to get them into high school. The high school, apparently some high schools here are a little iffy about that and they make you go through a little bit longer process of handing in your your files or, or your evidence, um, but college seems to be easier. Interesting. Um, so, so yeah, obviously it, it's going to vary by state. Um, so I, I don't know if, if in the U.S. most states you need special stuff or not, but definitely for people that, that, that you know, if, if they feel they have the time, it's probably something to worth looking into. Uh, because yeah, uh, like I mentioned, some some people feel that that you know homeschooling is bad because you know you, you, they're not getting the socialization necessary. Um, 
personally, uh, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> Everyone says that, but you're not even allowed to talk in school. So I don't understand <laughs> what that means. If you speak, you get in trouble. So I don't. Yeah. The uh, I mean, lo lunchtime, I guess we. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I understand. And there's also like the routine, the the following a routine, uh, yeah. you know, getting to school. And I, I understand how the structure can um, benefit a child. But at the end of the day, you have to really ask, does it really make that much of a difference? I mean, I, I don't have my son locked in a cage here. You know, we go out and we do things. Actually, we, they, there are many groups on the island for homeschooling here. We actually joined one. And I don't participate anymore with him. It has nothing to do with the group. They are a wonderful group of homeschoolers. Um, they're just their schedule of events doesn't work for me. Because I mentioned before, we don't have babysitters. And my husband works five days a week, Monday through Friday. So almost all their events were during the week. And I could never attend because it's too hard for me to go by myself with my three-year-old and with him. Because they are both a handful for different reasons. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, or I didn't know how to get to a certain place or something. So I kind of had to just like decline. I kept declining. Like I can't go to that event because whatever. But the thing is that they did science fairs. They did, um, you know, environmental um, scavenger hunts, things like that. Like okay. tricks that you would take if you were in a school environment. Exactly. That, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, oh, it sounds like field trips. So <laughs> Field trips, exactly. Yeah. Um, and there's many, there's many on the <laughs> island. No, pl plenty, plenty to see on the island too. So, uh, so go going back to uh, moving to Puerto Rico, you moved to Puerto Rico when everybody was leaving. <laughs> like, oh like, yeah, <laughs> like you guys moved after Hurricane Maria, right? No, no, no. I've been living here for five years. Already. Oh, five years. Oh, I thought yeah. I thought it was after. I moved back here. What happened was when Hurricane Maria hit, um, we're pretty minimalist as well. Not as minimalist as others. It wasn't that big of a deal to not have the light. It, it wasn't the life after the hurricane wasn't that much of a challenge, believe it or not. Not even with my son. They There is something about just like natural instinct and survival and... Yeah. They just went into survival mode and they both adjusted. They they understood. I'm sure that they had like a deep sense of feeling inside of like something's different, something is off. And they they were pretty well with, you know, not having the internet and things like that. Um, but what happened was my son, prior to Hurricane Maria, months, months, and months before, he fractured a bone in his leg. And he was um, in a cast for about four months. And it was taken off the day before Hurricane Maria, literally the night before. And the thing with him, with his condition, with his disorder, they have very sensitive bone structure. So the healing is kind of a longer process. After Hurricane Maria, Unfortunately, although we were able to get by, just the medical attention for his leg was a little iffy. I wasn't I wasn't sure if I was willing to risk him not being able to get an appointment because it was kind of it kind of felt after the hurricane like if you were not dying, don't go to the hospital. Because yeah, it was so much chaos. And it wasn't just about getting um, the medical attention. It was. You know, people were saying that there were diseases spreading mm -hmm. and you didn't want to come into like a, a contamination of any sort. It was a bit iffy. So after speaking with my husband, because, you know, these we're married, so we made a decision together. We just both knew without even thinking of it, that it was best for me to go back to New York with the kids until further notice. Uh, my son's school was not open yet, so he wasn't even in school for his school didn't open until right before Christmas. So it wasn't even like if I was pulling him out of school or anything. Yeah, yeah. They had they were waiting for for an approval to continue with classes with a generator because they had to make sure the generator was safe. They had to make sure it was sufficient. It had to pass like an inspection. And you can imagine there was so much red tape. And you can imagine imagine a whole entire island going through this process. Yeah. And you have to wait till it's your turn. So I said I'm going. My mother owns a house in New York. Why would I not go? 
you know, I have a home to go to. It's not like I had to look for a place to stay. Correct. So we went and I was miserable. Absolutely miserable. I could not wait to get back here. And everyone in New York thought I was insane. They thought for sure that my family would move back to New York, that after that the hurricane was the only thing that needed to happen to change my mind, that, you know, we were living like in a third world country and, and we were just being absolutely in, in ridiculous, you know, toughing it out and waiting it out. And I couldn't wait to get back here. I could not wait. I came back six months later. <laughs> I only took so long because I couldn't get the approval from the school I had to put him in to come back because I, I had to enroll him in school in New York City. And you can't just yank your child out of school. You have to have like a good enough reason. So it took some time that I was able to. <laughs> It's like I'm moving back to the island. That's the reason. <laughs> Yeah, and I all thought that I was like almost like a bad mom. They were like, "Why would you go back there?" They don't Why? have power. They're dying over. It. No. Uh, um, okay. It was pretty. So that... <laughs> I got a lot of judgment for that. <laughs> um, now, you you mentioned living somewhat minimalistic. Uh, so, I, I kind of wanted to ask you about that. Uh, living in Puerto Rico. To me, that's extremely important because every time you go to Puerto Rico, <laughs> like whenever I, I tend to be a minimalist ish. <laughs> uh, uh, but when I went to Puerto Rico, you know, my, my, my idea, you know, I'm like, I, I want to live an, a, a basic life. I want to live a normal life, a simple life. I want to cook and you know, use, using fire out in the back and all yeah. that stuff. Um <laughs> But everybody that I would talk to, they, they thought I was crazy, like like because they 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 want that American lifestyle, even though that's what I'm trying to <laughs> run away from. Uh -huh. uh, well, so it depends too. I definitely think some some places or some towns lean more towards a country life, and some lean more towards that American lifestyle. I feel like most. Most of the people, not all, but most of the people we know are definitely more country and can appreciate those things. Um, my my children are very used to having snacks that came from a tree. Um, you know, also with having store bought items as well. But they have a good balance of both. We don't favor the American lifestyle at all, or what what people call the American lifestyle. Um, but we know that we haven't been able to completely leave it yet for sure. We're, I don't think we're at any stage in life where we can just live off of the island and off, you know, like this minimalist, you know, all the way, the full deal. Um, but we have every year been getting closer and closer, but there's little things like for us, we have our furniture and the living room is a hand-me-down and we're not embarrassed about that. We needed a new refrigerator and we bought one from a used store and we're, we have no shame in that. There are just certain things that we don't care to spend a lot of money on. Yeah. And that has helped us build a better, um, you know, savings or just put the money to something that is a little bit more, more important. We also don't, you know, go out to eat often, almost maybe like three times a month. Where, for example, my husband's co-workers, they go out to eat every single day. My husband is like the only one who brings lunch from home every day. So it's, it, there's a good I, mix of people. Yeah. I, I, and it's totally okay to say, I don't need this. <laughs> like there, there's so many things that, that, that sometimes even, even things that I get for free. Like the other day I got uh, this big pack of napkins for free because they were giving them out at work. Uh, and I took it, but then I, I, I felt like, what the hell do I want this for? <laughs> like, like, yeah, but... like, yeah, they're napkins. I could use them, but I, I never had people over. So I ended up giving them to my brother because he has people over all the time. But but yeah, I, I'm like... And that's okay, <laughs> but it went to good use, see? <laughs> <laughs> pero, pero yeah, it, it, it's like, you know, it, sometimes it's okay to just let go of things. And I wish, I really wish more people would understand that because, uh, you know... Minimalism for me is extremely important. But anyway, uh, YouTube. Uh, how how did you end up creating a YouTube channel? Like like, what drove you to to do this? Um, it's so hard because I was I was definitely not in the mind frame that I am in now. 
when when I started, when I uploaded my first YouTube video, when I had the courage to actually take, I wanted to do it for some time. Um, there is a YouTuber called Ellen Fisher, and she's a vegan mom. They live in Hawaii, and I was looking for vegan recipes for my son. I was trying to, I I was experimenting. I wanted to see if changing his diet would help, um, like in, in his condition, if it would have like some kind of like medicinal, you know, power where just what he was consuming was sort of helping to heal him, so to speak. Okay. And, um, I came across her, I started binge watching her and I saw that when my son watched her, he wanted to mimic what her and her kids were doing. And I saw the power in that. And I said, wow, I can't believe that. I don't even need to speak to him or convince him. He's just watching and he's seen the example before him. And he wants to copy it. It was inspiring enough for him to want to be like that. Um, so we we started incorporating things. And then I wanted like Puerto Rican vegan recipes. And I was like, wait a second. I'm, I, I need to be able to incorporate my, my you know, beyondas and everything into this because yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't really see anything. And that's how I came across Hayden's channel. Um, not, he didn't have a recipe, but because he was, you know how YouTube works like with the search. Yeah, engine, yeah. And you, you type vegan. And, and, <laughs> and Puerto Rico on the same thing. He, his channel came up. Um, anyhow, and I just started to see that there were many um, people on this vegan, you know, lifestyle. And I said, oh, okay, this should be interesting for us because we're meat eaters. So I should start vlogging it because this will be an interesting journey to show people sort of converting to veganism. Um, And it was great at first, but then afterwards I didn't believe in it anymore. Um, No offense to any of the vegans. Um, I just don't believe that that's how nature intended it, to be honest with you. Um, but I do understand people who don't or choose not to eat meat. For example, my sister-in-law is a complete vegetarian all her life. So it, that was already in our family and I already understood what it was for like a person to not eat meat. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of stopped. So I was going to stop my channel because we stopped being vegan. And I I stopped vlogging for a little bit. And then I thought, what do I have to be ashamed of? I'm I'm, I'm just a regular person, you know, trying to do my best to take care of my family. And maybe that was good enough. Maybe I can keep vlogging. Maybe I can just keep showing, you know, our journey in life and, and, you know, learning as we go along. What's wrong with that? You know, I don't have to just have like the vegan title. Correct. And I didn't think the channel would grow. And it's so odd. Ever since I went that route, my channel grew immediately. I I can't believe it. It's so odd that that worked for some people. But for me, it kind of really didn't do much. (laughs) Uh, But once I started being more real, the the subscribers just started flowing, 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 flowing. So. Uh, I I like the fact that you mentioned the the vegan title because I, I do... Uh, and uh, same way, you know, I, I'm like, no, no offense to anybody that is vegan, that calls themselves vegan. That's fine. That That's your choice. But I'm like, why, why do we need the title? <laughs> uh, so I- like you mentioned Puerto Rican food, uh, and that's something that I started to think about because when I started watching Hayden also, uh, I was, I started thinking more about vegan and I'm like, I know that I could never be vegan. I like my, my pork chops sometimes. And <laughs> But I'm like Puerto Rican food back in the day, there was barely any meat because people didn't, 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 didn't have the any meat. And that people have about us that everything yeah. is fried and everything has meat. That is not true. How many of us grew up on just rice and beans? I mean, rice, beans, this is and, I and my t- yeah, huevo frito. Yeah, but. <laughs> huevo frito, and avocado, <laughs> mangoes but. for lunch. You but know, yeah, like, I'm like man, many of our of our dishes don't don't really include meat, or you can easily do them without meat or very little meat. So so that's what I tend to do. You know, I I you know I completely agree that we eat too much meat uh, as a society, uh, and a lot of it goes to waste. Uh, and I feel extremely bad about that. So. 
to produce to mass produce the, the meat products. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, the cruelty, I, I absolutely hate that. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, I hate that. Uh, and I want to find, you know, I, I keep always trying to find better sources of meat where, where the, the cattle and stuff is treated more humanely. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the meantime, I, I have just extremely reduced the amount of meat that I consume. So instead of making like rice with beans and chicken... And like the beans have ham anyway, like I just eat rice yeah. and rice and beans. I'm like I don't need the chicken. The chicken actually kind of bothers me. I hate dealing with the bone anyway. So, uh -huh. so uh, we we were like that also before we went vegan. We only had meat like three times a week. It was yeah. not every day. Um, and we have a lot of beyondas here. All my both my children eat beyondas with no problem. They they go yeah. they go up on it. So they're used to eating, you know, food like that. Um, which would be considered like plant based. Um we were being plant based without realizing that we were eating plant based. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so easy in Puerto Rico. Like every everywhere you go there's there's a, a pana tree or like a breadfruit. Uh, -huh. uh so so many so many options over there. Um, so, so yeah, the YouTube channel is doing well. Uh, and, and I know one thing that a lot of your subscribers do enjoy talking to you about is the homeschooling, no? Uh, yeah, on, on YouTube. I don't show it that often. <laughs> I really thought that I was going to kind of do a spin off and show the homeschooling often, but I, you know, on YouTube, you expose yourself. And I get it, obviously. I understand what I'm doing by being on YouTube. Oh, a big iguana just jumped behind me. <laughs> this is real life, that, guys. That, that happens in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Um, I, but I do notice that there are those like one or two bad apples. And I can brush off some of the negative um, comments. But when it comes to my children, I don't know... I don't know if I have the strength to. Um, I do my best. So I try not to expose them too much with the homeschool. Just because I don't want to leave that window open for... It's getting windy here. I hope you can hear me okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't want that window open or um, just for somebody to come in and, and say something negative about, about yeah. my babies. <laughs> because sa sadly, you know, YouTube... I like to think it's 98% great per people, but then there's always that 2% that. <laughs> yeah, and it's okay. It's it's fine. It's usually, usually they're not right. They're not correct. One time, though, um, sometimes they are right. They are saying something true. They're just saying it with a very nasty taste in their mouth. But I've learned to. Those are the ones that hurt the most, you know, because cause you're like, <laughs> man, they, they suck, but they're right. <laughs> like, yeah, I uh, know somebody about my voice one time and I was like oh you know I just kind of have like a whiny squeaky voice uh, maybe I should try to like mindfully tone it down a little bit in my videos um, well, see, you know things like that I, I actually <laughs> love your voice though I think it's unique well, like, it, it's, <laughs> um, so I, I'm sure because uh, of your YouTube channel showing off Puerto Rico uh, and all that you must also get all the comments from people that are like, "Oh, I want to do that too." Uh, how how do you how do you handle those? Because yeah, I, I do try. You know, I, I've been back in, in the United States for for over a year now, and I still get comments from my original video when I said I was moving to Puerto Rico. I still get people like, "Oh yeah, uh, can you help me find a place over there?" I'm like, "Dude, I've been living in the U.S. now for like a year, over a year." <laughs> But, oh yes, everyone's always asking questions like that about how to find land or property or a home. I mean, if somebody wants to do YouTube, I mean, I don't really feel like I'm in any place to give advice because I feel like you're actually showing yourself. It, 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 there are so many different ways to do YouTube. So if you're actually exposing yourself, you're you're turning the camera on you, your home, your your family or whatever. You have to go in with an open mind and you have to understand that there will be negative feedback no matter what you do. And if anyone says that they don't get negative feedback, they're lying because there, there's many. Even Obi, 
has gotten um, a couple of them. And he's amazing. He doesn't even, he's not even showing a personal side. Yeah, he's, he's kind of just showing the towns. He's pretty much yeah. 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 And still somebody will have, you know, something, not, not often, almost never, but still yeah. it will happen. And this is a person who's not even, like, putting his personal life out there. So you can imagine, you, you are opening yourself to a world of people. We're talking people from the United States or countries. So you have to understand that that's, that's what you're doing. So you, and I would always say, stay real and stick to who you truly are because it's so easy. I was getting into this habit of constantly asking people to subscribe and like the video. And to be honest with you, Javi, I don't like the way it feels. I know that that's what you're kind of supposed to do on YouTube. And I get it. But I don't like the way it no, feels. I, 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 I completely get it because when, when I was... I, I hate doing that. Like the whole... Like, for example, clickbait or or putting something yes. specific in the title. Like, I knew when I was in Puerto Rico that any video that I uploaded with the title Hurricane Maria, it was going to get a lot of views. Right. But but I was like, but no, I don't want to do that. Like, I, I, I feel like I'm using Hurricane Maria as a way of, right. of making my channel bigger. And I'm like, no, that feels wrong to me. No, no offense to the people that did it, you know, but for me personally, I was like, nah flag in almost all of my thumbnails and I kind of felt weird doing that but I just want to show that this video is about Puerto Rico Correct. so if you didn't read the title and if you didn't read anything else you'll see the flag and you'll know and you'll say oh wait what is that Puerto Rico video about let me click on it Correct. So and, and, and if the video is about Puerto Rico that's great but but to exactly. put you know when when the video has really nothing to do about about something like my my videos again they were not exactly about Hurricane Maria but I could have said oh life after Hurricane Maria but no it's not about the hurricane it's <laughs> so, I understand yeah it's the same thing with me being a woman almost every video that I have um that has to do with the beach or something if if I have a thumbnail and my bathing suit or something like that, those I grab people's attention more and they yeah. click on it just like that. I have that power in my hands to do that for every single video that I put out there. I can go to the beach once a week and throw up a <laughs> thumbnail of me on the beach and I will have 2,000 subscribers in a month, but I don't do it because that's not who I want to be. Correct. And that's not what I want to be known for. I also have a husband who's very understanding. He's very laid back. He doesn't, you know, worry about that stuff. So I have the freedom. I, I have the blessing to proceed in that manner. If I if I wanted to monetize my channel fast and, and start getting that money, but I don't do it because it's not who I am. Right. And I refuse to only be about that. So, yes, and we go to the beach often, Javi. That's another thing. We are very laid back, almost hippie kind of people. We go, I'm always in short shorts and tank tops. You know, I, in my house on the weekends, I'm usually just staying in my bathing suit because we're doing things outside and I want to jump in the pool real quick. And often for my vlogs, run in and throw clothing on. Oh, I'm sorry. Your video just <laughs> I often um, will throw clothing on just for the vlog because I say, ah, oh, no, because then it's going to look like I'm trying to get that attention, you know? Um, yeah, because I I understand what you mean. It is yeah, 100%. Yeah. That, that's my advice. Be real. If you are the person who, you know, does yoga in your bikini, then go ahead and do yoga in be your bikini. But understand that the most important thing is to be aware Yeah. Um, I and the exposure. <laughs> you, you, you mentioned the fact that yeah, you could you know take it take a photo in your bikini and you'll get more more likes and more views and stuff. Have you also felt like being a female YouTuber has has been a negative impact also? Or of course, of course, <laughs> especially from other females. That's the most that's the most ironic thing. Um, a lot of females may feel like. You know, why is she acting like that? Why is she talking like that? You know, there could be many things. Um, I think females just tend to be more like that in general. You're either very girl power or you're not. It's like there's kind of no in between. Um, but I, I have to say I feel very blessed because I have such a high percentage of females on my channel of all ages that really support me. And they just show nothing but like love. And, and just we're like on neutral ground. 
there are a few women that I know that, you know how they call hate, <laughs> uh, that, you know, give that vibe towards yeah. me. And that's okay. Um, that's their own, you know, demons that they have to deal with. But I've even, you know, from some men, they have gotten a little inappropriate. Um, and I've had to, I, I, I felt that I had to block two men so far. Um, cause I felt that their comments were a bit inappropriate. My husband didn't think much of it. He's like, what are you going to do, babe? You know, this is your, this is like your, your television channel, you know, everyone's watching. Um, yeah. but I, I feel you have to set some limits as well. You kind correct, of have to correct. put down at some point, you know, you can't just say it's okay. You know, I'm going to let it slide. I'm going to let it slide, but it will get to a point if the channel grows where it may be a little hard to filter through the good and the negative comments. So some things may slide. Yeah. I, I've like always been very good with, with like comments. Like if, if somebody has anything bad to say about me, I'm fine with it. I've only ever blocked one person uh, and only because they started talking crap about a comment that somebody else made. Um, so they, they, they kind of started talking crap about, about one of the people that are, you know, my normal commenters. So I was like, okay, you, you can talk about me all you want, but, but don't talk about them. I like, I, you're <laughs> asking me questions, but can I ask you a question? Yeah. How did that, how did that make you feel? Because Hor horrible. I know how it makes me feel when they talk to the other people. How did how did you feel? Did you feel protective? Yeah, like like I was like, no, like you you can throw whatever you want at me. I'm okay with that, but not I, them. I, like <laughs> I feel the same way. I feel so protective of my good stuff. Like I yeah. they're like I, I don't want anyone to ever say anything bad to them because I'm like, no, yeah. no, no, you don't do it. <laughs> say <Exactly>. it to me. <laughs> All right. So, uh, normally, well, I'll ask you: Is there any anything you want to to tell to people that that might be thinking, "Oh, I, I just we we kind of covered that a little bit." People that are thinking, "Oh, I just want to move to Puerto Rico," or people that are like, and again, we also kind of cover the people that just want to start the YouTube channel. Um, I, I guess the, the the basics are, you know, Puerto Rico, like you mentioned, you have to 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 have a plan. And I can, I can completely agree with that. I, 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 you know, I'm like, I still plan on moving to Puerto Rico again at some point, but I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make things work first. Uh, well, I can see this. There, there are two ways of looking at it as far as um, your actual home. If you are looking for land in Puerto Rico, then prepare yourself for the patience and the time that goes into that because purchasing land here and then getting all your contractors to actually do the work, that is a very long process here. It is not built I'm in like, a month. You can, you can go watch Hayden's channel and, and go through, through the process of getting electricity. <laughs> Put yeah, I, didn't, I didn't get a chance to see all of those videos, but I did one that was like in the middle of the process and I think in that one video he kind of mentioned like the other things that were going on yeah. and I remember telling him Hayden that's how it is here you know stay yeah. on top of him like you you have to 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 be on top of people and even then it's gonna take months if not years to to get to get certain stuff done yeah great job and they'll do what you ask them most of the time but people are very laid back here there is no rush there's no urgency there is yeah. no oh can we have a deadline they just kind of you know <laughs> which co coming from new york that's gotta be weird for you <laughs> yeah i <I'm> new york city <laughs> though, i had internships in manhattan <laughs> i was a teenager you know, when I was 17 years old, I had to have files and and and, and charts done by like 3 p.m. that day. You know, <laughs> so I I grew up very I I'm very fast paced. So moving here, it kind of took a lot to like meet in between and and just slow down a little bit and relax and just not expect things or people to work in the same, to have that same work ethic as me, which I mentioned in my last video to the work ethic here. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's, that's,
something to think about if you're moving out here. Um, if you are buying property that already has a home, um, for sure, without a doubt, the concrete homes, they may not be the prettiest, but they are the most. Uh, Hurricane Maria has proven that a uh, concrete home is the way to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, even I felt safe in my grandfather's old uh, concrete home. With the old windows, apparently those are even better than the new ones. So, yeah. <laughs> um, now, I, I actually wanted to ask you, your husband, he's also from Puerto Rico, right? Yes, born and raised, lived here all his life. Okay, because <laughs> something I always find curious is he, he, he really seems to enjoy Asian culture or... Oh, uh, I, yeah. <laughs> Because you guys have like this beautiful, at least from videos that I've seen, this beautiful garden, uh, and he seems to be really into bonsai trees. Or yeah, that. well, my husband's always been into um, fitness and tai chi and those okay. type of Asian inspired um, techniques and meditation and things like that all his life. Then he actually met somebody um, in his late teens. I think he was almost twenty already. He was just about to turn 20. He actually met a friend of, of my father-in-law, which is um, a vet. He's a vet. Uh, he was okay. in the army. He met an old, an old friend of him, and he bought him a bonsai. And he said, like, oh, this is what you do with this tree. You know, you trim it, you do this, you, and then you have to maintain it. So it started from one tree that was bought to him, and now we have it, an overflow <laughs> of bonsai. Here. Because my husband is like that. He is very... Um, quiet he's very content with he is the ultimate minimalist i i want to be like him one day he can eat the same exact thing every single day all day long breakfast lunch and dinner um he he doesn't drink or anything like that it's just water that's all he ever wants or needs um he doesn't buy new clothes or anything like that he's always barefoot he's <laughs> He's just happy in nature. He's been climbing trees since he's like two years old. You know, they couldn't find him. And you have to find Jordi. Isn't that Jordi? Ah, okay. You have to look up to find him. They always called him Tarzan because he always had long hair. Um, he's just like that. So he was very happy with that hobby because he could be that person that would stay every weekend home working on his trees. He was in his elements. He was in his happy place. Um, that, that's not a home <laughs> it's the, so that's uh, how that's fun. all right so normally i like to end these interviews with a question or two that are just silly questions not just for fun i like to call them just for fun so ah, <laughs> uh, no there, there, there's no right or wrong answer uh like like basically if you were to find a genie in a lamp Uh, but this genie would only grant you one wish. What would that be? <laughs> the, immediately when you say that, the first thing I think about is just like a healthier world. Okay. I think about like a healthier earth. But if I want to get like on a more deeper level, of a deeper level of that, uh, we are like all one world. So it's like every single person is a world. We are creating or living or making all of this happen. So, <laughs> but I don't want to get too, 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 too deep, but I would say just, just a better place to live. And if that means the world or individually, then yes, I just feel we need a little bit more wholesomeness. Okay. So that's, that would be my wish. <laughs> All right. Or five Not, billion dollars. I mean, you know. Either, can, you know, help the world or give me money. Well, so that I can help the world. <laughs> um, now, I'm going to make you a very difficult one. I, I think it's going to be difficult for you. Maybe impossible. If you had to get rid of one color, what would that be? <laughs> color? Yes. Don't get offended, Javi. I would get rid of black. You will get... What am I going to wear? <laughs> I like bright colors. I, I always try to pick my clothes of something that I would see like on a tree or something, like a flower or I don't know. I like colors. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> um, no, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, 
Um, oh, I, I had another one and I can, kind of forgot what it was. Okay, keep on coming. No, I, I, that that was the last one, and I kind of forgot it. So, uh, <laughs> it, it, was, it, it was just here, and now it's gone. Anyway, uh, any any last words that you would like uh, to tell people listening to this? Um, that it's never too late. It's never too late to live a better life. I am almost forty years old, and I feel like I'm in my best growth ever. I feel like everything I learned before is kind of irrelevant <laughs> and I'm starting over. Um, so it's never too late. If you are ever in a low, if you're ever feeling um, like you just have, you're stuck and you just can't move forward or, you know, like, oh, what's the point now? Never, ever, ever feel like that. It takes just a few seconds to just stop and just say, nope, nope, I can do this. I can change everything. Stop. All right. I, I am 40 and I am kind of changing everything. So so there, there there's that. Uh, age for me is like, you know, whatever. Like I'm 40. I feel like I'm 20. My body feels like it's 60. Uh, whatever. <laughs> But you can balance it out. You can meet yourself halfway. Yeah. And then I remain 40. So it's all good. <laughs> Um. So, social media. Where should people go look for you? We we are gonna have links on the, on the description. But uh, what well, what kind of social media? Place, the main place would be YouTube, and for Facebook, I do have a page just for Vida Mora. Um, I received many friend requests on my personal page, and I've had to deny many of them. The reason why I deny the friend request on my personal page is because. On my personal page, I have my family, I have my friends. So you becoming my friend is kind of like exposing you to them as well. Yeah, yeah. And I just don't feel it's professional to do that. So that's why I created a separate page, um, you know, for for Vida Mora. All right. Uh, so you don't do like Instagram, Snapchat, any of that? No. Twitter? No, I am too busy of a mom. I, <laughs> I ain't got no time for that. <laughs> All right. I well, I, again, I really wanted to thank you for 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 doing this. I know you're busy, and I really appreciate it. Um, and again, for for those of you listening, there will be uh, links in the description of this of this podcast. This is gonna be my no, probably my second podcast that I'm gonna have with uh, actual video. So that's cool. Hopefully that, that continues. At the beginning, I didn't want to do video because I'm like, eh, it's too much work. But I'm going to try. I'm going to try to make this work. Um, as usual, I am. Thank you so much, Javi. Thank you for, for the opportunity and for amazing questions. You kept it You kept it going. I, I feel like we it's over already. That's how I feel. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, as usual, this is Javier. Uh, the prolific creator podcast uh, uh you can follow me on twitter and instagram at stuff networks you can also f look for the prolific creator podcast on you know the usual itunes uh google uh, google music google podcast uh spotify or just go to the prolific creator i mean prolific and that that that's about it oh yeah If you listening to this have any questions or you want to email me, please feel free to again contact me on Twitter or Instagram at Stuff Networks or just contact at prolificcreator.com. Uh, that is it. We are out of here. So bye bye, bye, -bye everybody. <laughs>